Hello, where you've joined in a conversation on COVID-19 health. Let's talk about the pandemic. Let's talk about the vaccination. I'm Sneha Mordani. Let's get started by talking about the latest information which has just come in a few minutes ago. Bharat Biotech International Limited, the company that is developing Covaxin, which is India's indigenous vaccine against COVID-19, has just declared that their vaccine is showing efficacy of a percentage of as high as 81%. That is what Bharat Biotech has said. Now, this is great news and every which way you look at it, given the fact that the World Health Organization has said that because this is a pandemic, any vaccine which is showing efficacy percentages of around 50% should be considered good enough. Efficacy of 81% is what Bharat Biotech has said and I'm going to take you through the detailed statement. This is data from the third phase trials, 25,800 participants, the study was unblinded and all of these people received a vaccine or placebo in a one-to-one -one ratio essentially. It has been seen that the vaccine was well tolerated, 81% interim efficacy in preventing COVID-19 in those without prior infection after the second dose of the vaccine as is the way it's supposed to be done. Clinical trial to continue through the final analysis at 130 confirmed cases in order to gather further data and to evaluate the efficacy of the vaccine in additional secondary study endpoints. Lots of questions about efficacy of Bharat Biotech that they have the data for safety. They have the data for immunogenicity, but where is the data for efficacy and hence this couldn't come at a better time because we've just started the vaccination drive for the elderly and for those above the age of 45. Many people actually ask there is efficacy data which is not there for Bharat Biotech's Covaxin. Should we go ahead and take Covaxin? I think this should settle uh, all of those queries, all of those doubts regarding Covaxin because the interim data is suggesting this 81% efficacy and that's the good news. Also, the other important information today is coming in from Haryana, where there has been a super spreader event. 57 students of a school have tested positive in Karnal in Haryana. 390 students and teachers had to go through, uh, go through testing and uh, after which uh, it was, it was uh, realized that 57 of them have been diagnosed with COVID-19. This is a big problem because this is a shocker and this has become a super spreader event in the state of Haryana. So this is the highlight essentially of the day. As far as the COVID-19 situation is concerned, today is the second day of the drive, the third day rather of the drive uh, in the country. And the government has said that things are picking up pace. In fact, registrations have increased. Also, the government has said that uh, there are making attempts. The state governments have been told to ensure that there is no overcrowding at the vaccination sites. And we didn't really hear of overcrowding at vaccination sites today. But apart from that, there are problems as well because Maharashtra, Kerala, Punjab, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat and Karnataka continue to report an upsurge in daily COVID cases. Apart from that, as far as doses are concerned, up until now, after the 16th of January, 1 crore 56 lakh doses have been administered. It is still worrisome given the fact that we would like to inoculate 13 lakh people every single day to reach that magic figure of 30 crore people by July 2021 so that the most vulnerable frontline health workers, healthcare workers and the 27 crore people in the country, the most vulnerable and the people who are developing severe infection will get the protection for this 30 crore people need to be covered but that process is not picking up so much pace is uh, is what the government is essentially is seems to be indicating by these numbers apart from that six states are like i said reporting more cases so 86 percent of the new cases are being reported from these states that i just mentioned maharashtra recording over 7800 cases kerala recording close to 3,000 cases, Punjab, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat and Karnataka. This is a problem there. Maharashtra alone, the government says, accounted for a weekly increase of 16,000 cases in terms of the total number of cases. So there is a bit of a problem when it comes to these cases. 
However, the good news is that in different parts of the country also, uh, we can see that not all places are reporting increase in cases. There are many, in fact, areas that are not reporting cases at all. There's good news on the recovery front as well, where 87% of the new recovered cases have been reported in six states is what the government is saying in its data. There are also quite a few cases, uh, states that are not reporting cases and deaths. And this is something that should, in fact, give us the assurance that it is only a handful of states that really need to buck up in the sense they need to get out there and tell the people that here is the need to take the protocol, follow the protocol, take all the precautions that are required. Like I mentioned earlier, and this is data from 7 a.m. today, the data will be coming at 7.30. More than 1 crore 56 uh, lakh vaccinations have been, doses have been given out in the country already. All in all, the situation is such that uh, the vaccination process has picked up some amount of pace. Uh, the third day of vaccination drive is seeing uh, walk-in registrations. The government has also made an important announcement saying that all private hospitals can now go ahead and uh, dose the people who are coming in. Manual registrations are being allowed. So the effort is to get more and more people to get the, get the shot against COVID-19 as quickly as they can. Also, the Union Health Minister has said that hospitals that can allow and if they, their systems, their, their infrastructure, their manpower allows them, then they can also continue to inoculate 24 by 7. So there is no restriction for a 9 to 5 or a 9 to 6 sort of a schedule that we were seeing earlier in the previous, the first phase of vaccination. More vaccinations, so go to a vaccination site. If it's convenient, if you know that people are going to are getting shots at a vaccination site, even at 10 p.m. in the night, go ahead and do it, is what the government has said. A couple of other important things that the government has clarified, and it's extremely important to put this out. Initially, there were concerns about people receiving the doses of the vaccine and questions being raised as to whether people who are on blood thinners should be getting it or not. I, in fact, asked a question of the government yesterday about this and the government has clarified and the government is on record to say that yes, indeed, the vaccine is safe among the elderly in the country. Also, even if they are on, on, uh, on blood thinners, they can go ahead and take it and there is no problem. So that clarification has come in from the government. Apart from that, states have been told by the center to boost the vaccination drive the process that utilize 100% capacities of private hospitals also. The government has also said, since many have been asking this question, that there is no shortage of vaccines and adequate vaccine doses have been allocated to hospitals. It's an ongoing process. So our vaccination site may not have the vaccine, but it will still get a vaccine in a day or half a day. So it is, these will be problems, it will be regular problems. So what we need to do is just be patient and wait for our turn essentially is what the government is saying. These are conversations are ongoing. The government has said that this is going to be a marathon. It's not going to be easy. This is the first time that we're inoculating an adult population in a pandemic of, uh, of this proportion where just so many people are getting affected. And that's the reason why everything will not be smooth. The effort is to streamline the process as much as they can. All of this has been said by the government. Apart from that, the government has also made some new announcements for the benefit of states. Private hospitals should open the vaccine slots for 15 days a month at least, is what the government is saying. Initially, we saw some states vaccinating just twice a week, uh, some even thrice a week, uh, and that was a concern. Now the government has laid down this rule that for 15 days at least, you have to vaccinate and you have to in fact make an attempt to do this at flexible hours at all odd hours also so those who can in fact come to you late at night or early in the morning should in fact be allowed to come uh, the COVID 2.0 portal can be scaled up is what the government is saying to accommodate all potential and eligible citizen beneficiaries this portal should be put to effective use as the backbone of the vaccination program so that essentially doesn't change Apart from that, there are guidelines on COVID-appropriate behavior. In spite of many things being said about 
taking the vaccine and continuing to follow covid appropriate behavior a lot of people are still not doing it and that is going to be a problem importantly the government has said for states going to polls remember we are starting to vote now in four states and one union territory there could be localized outbreaks there is a concern take care of localized outbreaks in maharashtra also there have been concerns after the wedding season there were wedding gatherings for the wedding season after which there were localized outbreaks and that is something that should be avoided is what the government is saying all in all this is a work in progress like i said we will be getting the latest data as to how many people has india inoculated up until now given the fact that 30 crore is our target but from yesterday i'm just picking up data from yesterday there was a uh, there was in fact an increase in numbers given the fact that registrations have opened up now uh, over 6 lakh people in the country got the shot against covid-19 so the second day of the vaccination saw 6 lakh people get the shot and today of course the data is going to be given out by the government in their daily press conference or daily statement in just about an hour and a half roughly from now thank you for joining in this conversation on covid-19 the pandemic and like i said this is not just about the pandemic this is not only about sars cov2 virus this is also about other issues which we will continue to touch upon in days to come and you should in fact connect with us to talk about the other important issues Uh, that affect all of us these are health issues these are problems of diabetes is a lifestyle disorders even rare diseases a uh, lot of things to discuss and detail upon but right now of course covid continues to uh, hit the headlines and continues to be uh, in the headlines and that's the reason why uh, we are focusing single handedly on covid 19 thank you for joining in